All right. G'day, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Malts with Mates. Today, I'm joined by the amazing Jane Salford at Salford Distillery. Jane, how are you doing today? Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for coming on. What are you drinking? What do you got there? Well, normally I'd be drinking somebody else's whiskey on this sort of occasion because I like to talk about someone else's whiskey and what I like about it. But today, well, tonight for us, um, I'm actually drinking an Overeem port matured 43% um, because we had some special uh, news to announce today, I guess. Um, you just announced me as Jane Sawford from Sawford Distillery, but I'm going to have to revert back to my uh, my maiden name, which is actually Overeem, because we we took over Overeem today. Very exciting. Fantastic. Yeah. It's brilliant news. And this, yeah. has, been, this has been in the pipeline for a, a while, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it was sort of announced to the public about six months ago, but the, the settlement day was actually today. So even though it's just settled today, I sort of feel like we've semi-owned it for the last six months because we've been gearing up for this for this very day. Um, but, yeah, as of tomorrow, it's it's official. Well, it's official now, I guess, but I'm not doing much about it tonight except chatting with you. <laughs> no, that's fine. We don't need to get into that. But, I mean, it... It is right that you go back to your maiden name there because, uh, yeah, you are Jane Overeem. You are, you've got, you and Mark, your husband, have started Sawford Distillery and you and your father, Casey, started Overeem Distillery. You're working with, I think, White Label at the moment. You worked with Lark for a long time. So you've worked with and you've, you've been one of the biggest names in Australian whiskey for quite some time. So... You know, we're, we're re I'm, I'm really interested. So can you tell us about who Jane Salford is and, and what you do? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, look, uh, up until this time, uh, yeah, it's been a pretty special journey. So I um, I sort of started in the whiskey industry in 2007 uh, when my father, Casey Overeem, started to, well, he decided to start a, a hobby distillery. So Overeem was always, um, yeah, it was meant to be a bit of a hobby for Dad, but um Obviously, it's it's a bit different to that now, uh, but oh, oh, have we lost? Have we lost you, Jane? If you can hear me, you've just frozen. I'm not sure what's happened there. Three minutes in, and uh, and it's already started going downhill. <laughs> I might just see if I can send her a message and just send her a message there. Anyway, for the people who have just joined us uh, today, we are we are speaking with. Oh no, she's gone. She's gone completely. Okay, I think she's had to reset. For those who have just joined. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you unfortunately can't post comments to the video, but if you're on Twitter, feel free to post a comment and we can put it on screen. Today I'm talking with Jane Sawford of Sawford Distillery, who was previously Jane Overeem of Overeem Distillery. Uh, if you don't know the name, I'd be very surprised. Overeem are incredibly famous through the world of whiskey, especially Australian whiskey, for their huge, boisterous spirit and just a great whiskey all around. Uh, and yeah, tonight's just a just a way to chat with Jane. Uh, should she log back in? If anyone's curious, please do let me know what you're drinking. I'm actually I'm not on the whiskey uh, today because it's it's 11:30 in the morning. So I thought I'd switch to something a little different, and I'm drinking a 15 year old Armenian brandy because you know you always want to try something new, something different, something interesting. And I've got to say it is good stuff. I also did. I think I'd drink it today because it does taste oddly similar to the big boys for sherry casks uh, that Wolverine did, so I thought that would be a fun little connection there. All right. We'll just try and see if we can get, back there, get Jane back there, see 
what's happened and if she's okay. We might have we might have lost her. We have a we got nothing there. Nothing there. But again, if anyone here is on Twitter, feel free to comment and uh, tell us who you are, where you're watching from, and what you're drinking today or tonight. I know it's a bit early in some places in the world, but uh, you know it's it's past ten o'clock somewhere. I'm sure, so you can always drink. Unless you got work, probably don't drink if you're working right now. I know a couple of people watch this at work. Might not be the best idea to drink on the job. Can't promise that they won't fire you. Interesting. Interesting. It's always wonderful having these little technical issues that seem to pop up from time to time. Um, I guess in the meantime, while we'll wait for Jane, uh, I'll have a quick chat because, you know, we have an Australian distiller on today, Jane Salford, but currently I'm in Belgium, which is very interesting, especially from a whiskey perspective. Uh, if you can manage to get your hands on any Belgian whiskey, I would really encourage you to, to try out what's happening in Europe at this point in time, especially considering that a lot of Belgian distilleries are using the malt and the wash from uh, Belgian breweries, uh, you know, minus the herbs and spices. See, Molenberg is a fantastic example of a distillery that is using quite a lot. For those who don't know, they come from the Tanker Brewery, who originally made the, the Golden uh, Carouse, which is an award-winning beer. And all they've done for their whiskey is they've taken their wash you know, they've not, uh, they've not added the herbs and spices and they've just distilled that really great wash, that really great beer into a whiskey. By doing that, they're sitting on a fantastic product that really hits it out of the park every single time. So it appears that Jane has just frozen up. And we're just reconnecting from another device. Uh, you know, it's these little things in lockdown and in, in the age of the pandemic that someone who's not very technically minded like myself uh, attempts to organize something like this. But it's all fun and we hope you do have a laugh. Oh, Susan. Uh, Susan from Irish Drams is drinking water at the moment. Uh, and she's waiting on a delivery from Celtic Whiskey Shop. Susan, uh, Susan, what delivery are you waiting on, out of curiosity? Because I know you always get some really fantastic and interesting whiskey, so it'd be great to know what you're going to be getting uh, in a little while's time. And if anyone is interested in Australian whiskey as well, it's a fantastic book that was released a few years ago. I unfortunately don't have it with me now, but it was called Kadolka and First Doll Spiritual Journey. It was, I believe, a, a, a newspaper illustrator, uh, someone who draws little illustrations for the cartoons, and went through, uh, through Tasmania, seeing all the distilleries at the time. This is 10 years back or so, but it gives a great idea and a great oath, and it does one thing, that you always want. It makes it fun. Here we are. Sorry, I just <laughs> I, I had to switch my computer off, and then when I switched it off, it came back on. It started doing updates, and I thought, "Oh no!" Anyway, 
I'm back on now. I'm on my phone. I hope it's okay. Don't worry about it. I'll be completely honest with you. I actually, I run these streams and these broadcasts through my phone because ah. for some reason my, yeah, my, my webcam freezes up when I do it through my laptop, but the phone seems to do it just fine. So it's all good. All right. Well, let's hope we're all fine now. <laughs> Sorry. I think <laughs> that's the NBN for you. You know, that's, uh, that's what we get. Yeah. Look, it's actually more comfortable on my phone. Anyway, I can sit back on the couch and relax. Oh, yeah. I'm loving the whiskey wall behind you, by the way. Yeah. I can... You sit and we... Oh, hang on. i got to go that way. And we've got a little barrel in there. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. That's fantastic. Is the barrel full of whiskey? Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's not quite full. Um, it's not quite full. It needs a top but up, it, does it? But it does have whiskey in it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, what were we talking about? <laughs> um, oh, look, you said about uh, maybe I, I think I was starting to explain a bit of my journey and just um, how I got involved in the industry. And, um, yeah, look, it's been a big, um, a, a, yeah, quite a long journey now. I was just saying, I don't know when you lost me, but I have been involved since 2007 when my father started Overeem. Um, as a hobby business and it, it took off after that but um it we did start so, quite small so we were only producing about 12 or 1300 litre barrels a year so it was very it was very small in that first year mm -hmm. and then the second year we made about 20 25 I think it was uh, so the plan was always to grow um, and yeah which is what we did um, uh, I took off to WA for for a couple of years to do some some marketing over there, um, and then it was in 2011 when I came back to Tassie that I got really involved in the industry. So, Dad sort of said to me, "Oh, can you come back and um, maybe do some marketing for me? Help me market my whiskey and, and maybe sell it for me?" Because there was no real plan. There really wasn't. It was like, you know, we didn't know if the whiskey was going to be great, and uh, there was a lot of unknowns. Anyway, we came back and. We started planning and um, we decanted our first barrel and, um, I mean, we'd done a bit of marketing on, uh, on we'd done a bit of branding prior to that, you know, getting the bottles organised and labels and, and things like that. So we were sort of ready to go, but it wasn't until we really decanted that first cask um, and tasted it and we were so excited with what we had um, to go into bottle and that's what really got me excited that I thought, yeah, I've, I've got a product that I love and I want to give a crack at selling. So that was that was really the start of it then. That's fantastic. And yeah. you as well. So you you you've done the sales, you've done the marketing, and you're you're the co distiller, the distiller. Yeah. So I learnt to distill in those early years, um, and then I really focused on the sales and marketing for for quite some time after that. But then once, um, yeah, gosh, it's a, it's a long story, but once I left Lark and Overeem, once they merged, uh, Mark and I started Sawford Distillery and that's where I got back hands on with distilling. Because it was just a two-man operation for us, um, we really, we had to both distill. We took in turns distilling um, and, you know, you got to lay your, your barrels down and we were willing to wait for another five years until I could start selling again. So... But now the fact that we've taken over Overeem um, means that I can get back into selling again. So, yeah, as of tomorrow. Excellent. Well, I mean, that, that brings us on to, the, on to the big thing because Sawford Distillery, as you've mentioned, is, it's, it's, a new, it's a new distillery in Australia. I won't say it's the newest. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I'm sure one opened up yesterday. But what is Sawford Distillery? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. So we we started Sawford Distillery because we didn't have Overeem anymore and I was really keen to get back um, into distillery ownership and manufacturing and, and, and all the sales and marketing that would go with it. So that was the plan and we planned to release our Sawford whiskey in 2022. Um, but now that we've taken over Overeem, we're actually changing the company name to Overeem Distillery. Um, so Sawford Distillery will be um, will be no longer, but we're still undecided <laughs> as to whether we will release Sawford whiskey um, 
with the barrels we originally laid down for mm. Salford um, in 2022. So we're just gonna we're gonna park that for a little while and just see um, how it all goes with Overeem and 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 I guess write a new business plan um, from here on in. No, well that's really interesting. And I I mean I know my my opinion is not going to matter here, but I think it would be fantastic if you released one batch of Salford, the original cast you'd lay down, if you release those as Salford, I, because I, I would love to taste some some Salford whiskey and some over yeah. whiskey. And, and compare the pair. James made both of these. You know, yeah. that'd, be, that'd be amazing. It would. And look, it's <laughs> very tempting. And I think, I think it's looking likely, highly likely that we will do that. Um, because we have changed things along the way from how we originally made Overeem. Um, I like to think we've made some improvements along the way. Um, and look, we've, we've continued to get advice from, from Dad and, um, and even he suggested things along the way that he said, oh, I would have liked to do this differently. So look, I do think that there will be a difference in product there. Um, and another thing is that Overeem is, um, we, we really want to keep Overeem uh, very traditional and and really focus on releasing single casks for Overeem. So, um, you know, we may be able to experiment a little bit more if we do release Salford um, and, yeah, try some different casks and maybe marry some casks, do some finishing. It just gives us a, a little bit more to play with, I guess. All right. And that that's, that's yeah. yeah, go to the future. I mean, that, yeah, that excites me going into the future, I think. Well, speaking of the future as well, and you said you don't want to release anything until 2022. Um, I understand at that point in time, your spirit's going to be five or six years old. Yeah, that, that will be five years. So we do taste around four and a half. Um, generally, anything before that, we just know is not quite ready and it does just get better after about four and a half years. Um, five years, yep, sweet spot. Anything after that, um, yeah. That's that's really ge the general rule for us, but it is really about tasting. So we've quite often had some casts that are four years, eight months or five years and six months, and they are better than the ones that we've left in the 100-litre cast for six years, say. Mm. Yeah. So you really start monitoring after that four and a half years. I mean, that's a great point you bring up there with the 100-litre casks. Um, we do have a lot of whiskey nerds uh, in the UK who watch this show and are always curious about how the Australians are doing it. So is there any chance you could run us a bit through the, your production and your maturation? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have two stills, um, the wash still, the spirit still. Uh, our wash still is 1,800 litres, uh, an all-copper um, pot still made in Tasmania by Peter Bailey from Naplua. He's an excellent still craftsman really impressed with his work um, and then we have an 800 litre spirit still so we generally at the moment when we're, we're doing one run a day um, and that's a, a 12 hour uh, distillation and from that we'll yield about 120 130 litres of heart spirit and yeah 100 or just over 100 litres will fit into that 100 litre barrel we pop it in the barrel and we don't touch it for another for plus years until we think about what I was just explaining there with the with the tasting and and really start monitoring it after that. Okay, fantastic. I mean, I, I love the idea of the hundred litre casks as well. Um, personally, I I know that some people aren't a fan of it, and I actually I chat with Matt Bailey the other day who really doesn't want to see those small casks, but I love the hundred litre. What was the choice behind for you and Mark to use a 100 litre cask instead of 200 or 250? Yes, yeah, so I should actually mention we are doing 200 litre casks as well. We're doing 200 mm -hmm. litre bourbon casks. Um, so 100 litre casks primarily for ex, uh, export and ex sherry. We are doing um, 100 litre bourbon casks as well. Um, and we're, we're doing quite a lot of 200 litres. Um, and to be honest, that's probably the future of our distillery is majority 200 litre casks. Um, we've got a couple of 300s down, I think six now. So we'll see them in a, in a long time. <laughs> um, but I don't know if Matt 
Bailey, did, was he specifically referring to the hundreds? Because I know there's a lot of distilleries in Australia using 20s and 50s, which is something he that... Was um, <laughs> yeah. He was. He was he specifically was, referring, was referring to, to, to those really small ones. Matt does okay, a... the really small ones, the thing. 20s, the 50s. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I'm, I'm sort of with Matt on that one. So, you know, I'm, I'm quite proud of... Um, of the hundred litre cast that we're using, and I, I certainly wouldn't go smaller than that at this stage. I mean, we had a we did do some experimenting with some twenty litre casks. We laid down, um, yeah, a small number of them just to see how our spirit would would go in those because you really don't know until you've tried it, I guess. Um, and look, the spirit was quite good, um, but what we did find is that it was very inconsistent, and that was what we struggled with. Um, yeah, it wasn't so much the fact that the whiskey wasn't any good. It just wasn't our style. It wasn't our profile and it was quite inconsistent. So we just didn't want to be releasing something that was hit and miss, you know. And that's why no, we, that's we're quite, yeah, we're pleased with the 100 litre cast because we do get that real consistency in, in product. No, fantastic. Um, and you do want the consistency. Uh, yeah, which is great. We we res we do respect someone who has that. Oh, you've got. Oh, thought we'd lost you again. Then the screen the screen went black. <laughs> yeah, I just got a, I just got a call coming through, but I just declined it. So I hope that's it's all picked up now. Oh, you can take it. You know, put. I'll try and rope them into this somehow, <laughs> and then we can we can all <laughs> chat whiskey together. <laughs> and I guess I mean outside of that, obviously you've. I mean, it's you've had an incredible journey, and as you mentioned today, you you got over and back, which again, congratulations! I'm so happy about that. It's fantastic. You've got Sawford Distillery. Lot you've worked with Lot, you've worked with White Label. Um, where else in Australia do you look for regarding whiskey? Is there anywhere else? Where else you're excited for? Yep. Sorry, have you just lost me again? Uh, we do have a black screen. Okay, hang on. I'll just see if I can start that back up. I got another call. <laughs> this is not going so well. Oh, it's okay. funny. It's the laughs that make it what it is. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I can't seem to get the, the camera back, but um, anyway, it may pick up. Uh, sorry, you're going to have to repeat your question. So uh, you've worked with and for and you are some of the biggest names in Australian whiskey. Where else in Australian whiskey are you excited for? Oh, look, yeah, there's a, there's quite a number of them. I'm excited to watch the, um, the progression of I think, I think we are losing you again there, Jane. Uh, Sullivan's coat. No, no, no. <laughs> We've lost her again. <laughs> We've lost Jane Sawford once again. But it is fantastic to hear about that. Uh, Overeem is back in their hands. Sawford is becoming Overeem. They have, I assume they have the Overeem stock. I will be asking that question. They've got the Sawford stock that will be five to six years old upon release in 2022. So this is a great time for Australian whiskey. Um, as for Susan from Irish Dram, she has said that uh, that delivery from Celtic Whiskey Shop, she's getting the Whistler Calvados cask and Ola also Sherry cask. I might ask Jane about what type of cask styles they use. We know they're using ex bourbon, ex sherry. Overing has previously used port, but if they're using any type of Calvados or any type of Australian brandy, that could be quite interesting to see. Anyway, for those who are watching today, again, please, if you're on Twitter, if you're on Facebook, anything, let us know what you're drinking. Let us know what you're looking forward to. Let us know if you want to get yourself a bottle of, uh, of Overing or Sawford. And if you have any questions for Jane, type them in. You know, it's always great to have questions coming in live from the audience. Now, I'll just double check the emails because I believe what happened last time may have happened again or maybe she's gotten a phone call. <laughs> uh, 
Oh. How are we going? Back once again. We're back on. Oh, dear, I'm so sorry about back this. Once again. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be any good, but anyway, it's the calls that are interrupting the broadcast. Don't worry about it. Now, I uh, I do have something interesting, by the way. Um, Boutique Dave from that Boutique Whiskey Company has just commented and said <laughs> their only Australian releases so far have been from Overeem Distillery. Uh, uh -huh. So I'm sure, it, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, gosh, I'd love to do another one of them, by the way. <laughs> I've actually got one on the yeah, shelf. I think, yeah, they, um, yeah, that was that was great. I'd love to do another one of them. Um, I didn't realise we were still the only, um, the only Australian release. That's interesting. Well, Dave, he's also just said so far, so I think that means he could be open to getting some more of your stock. Uh, and I mean, I would be behind that because I find it's easy to find the peaky overing. In this side of the world, but it is defined over him, over him, for some obscene reason. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we we used to have some distributors in the in the UK, so we're looking at picking um picking a relationship back up with them, hopefully in the near future. So hopefully you start to see a bit more over him over there. I mean, I would love to see some more over him over here, uh, especially because every time I. I talk about Australian whiskey with someone from the UK. They'll know, you know, they know Sullivan's Cove and, sorry, very interesting point here. Jane, apparently you're on the label of the boutique whiskey company over here. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I remember exactly what it looks like. The first one, we've actually done two with you. Um, and the first one, I said that uh, I look like a boy. So I asked them to put me in a dress the next time. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the first cartoon was me in, uh, in some green pants and a green T-shirt, which I and then the second one I think they've got me in a in a long skirt. So that was an improvement from the first one, <laughs> which I wonder which one Dave's got. I mean, I, I assume Dave's got both. Dave has quite the collection of whiskey uh, that he does love drinking, it, which I which I thoroughly support. Um, yeah. No, we'd we'd all love we'd all love to see more of your whiskey over here. And out of curiosity, if sort if Overing has any distributors in the UK, do you know who yep. they are? And so we can support you. Would you uh, yeah. do you want to tell us where we can purchase your whiskey at this point in time? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of Oak Cask Distribution. So yeah, so we'd, we're we're hopefully going to be picking up this relationship again um, because they did a really good job um, several years ago getting over him out and about over there, and um, yeah, we want to work with them um, again and and go through it all and um, yeah, figure out if that's something that they would really love to do once again. I just haven't spoken to them in a little while, so I'm not quite sure where they're at with it all. No, I mean, uh, we'll definitely will check in with them. And uh, guys, if you see any Overeem anywhere, make sure that you pick it up to really try some fantastic Australian spirit, uh, to try something that Jane has made, and to support some small guys because, you know, we, we want to support everyone as best we can in this time. I think, now, you mentioned earlier you were pressed for a bit of time. So I guess I've just got a few more questions I want to ask you. Sure. The first would be, how are you seeing Australian whiskey on the world stage at the moment? Yeah, so look at the moment. Um, I think it is very heavily Sullivan's Cove driven, um, given the award in 2014. And like you said, yeah, you seem to see a lot of Sullivan's Cove and, and people talking about that. So, look, I, I'm really excited for the future of, of Aussie whiskies and I, I really hope that um, a lot of them will be able to really experience expand their horizons and, and get their product overseas um, because there's some really good whiskey coming out of Australia now. And, um, yeah, I mean, in the past it's it's just all been – there's never been enough. Um, you know, there's only really been enough to supply our domestic market. So to be able to see some of these new distilleries come on board um, that have just heavily been focusing on production um, and making as much as they can so that they can – start to export and, and 
do that sort of thing. Um, and I think quite a few of them will be coming on in the next couple of years. So it'll be really interesting to watch. And I just, yeah, I hope and believe that they will have good product and, um, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. Oh, fantastic. Um, in what ways, I always ask this one as well, it's always interesting, in what ways would you like to see the community supporting whiskey in this difficult time? Um, yeah, look, just um, continuing to continuing to drink, <laughs> continuing to drink it, I guess. You cut out a little there. Was it how, how, would, how would I like to see the community supporting? Supporting whiskey, uh, supporting the whiskey industry at this time. Yeah, yeah, just uh, continuing to buy and look. Um, I wouldn't. I shouldn't even say direct from the distilleries because yeah, I do for quite some time. I mean, it was just on. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. We're back. This is terrible. <laughs> uh, no, I was going to say it's great how many how many bars in that have been real innovative and 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 selling some of their open bottles to people online. I love it. Mm. You know, so it's, I love it's that. good. The more we can I love drink. That. I also love. Well, I, I see a few bars have done uh, have done home delivery service. They'll deliver yeah. pints to all, and I think that's I think that's fantastic. I love fantastic. that. Fantastic, yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, what we normally do now, I don't know if you've ever watched any of these uh, any of these uh, broadcasts before, but I do have a quiz and an anagram section that I do, which is okay. just a bit of a laugh to see what you're what you're going and. Everything involving your questions and anagrams is about Australian whiskey, focusing on Tasmanian, but not necessarily Tassie. So, do you want to head into that? Go for it. I'll give it a. I'll give it a try. <laughs> All right. My first question is, what is the oldest Australian whiskey released? Oh gosh, I just saw this on. On something that came up the other day, someone was selling a, a really big collection. Is it Carayo? I meant oldest aged, sorry. Oh, oldest aged. I thought you meant the oldest whiskey. Well, you did say no. that. <laughs> um, well, yeah, okay. Oh, the oldest aged. I would say 21-year-old Sullivan's Cove. You've got it in one, yeah. 21-year-old oh, Sullivan's Cove. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's it's funny that you mention uh, the Carayo as well because I I think I've tried that. I feel mm -hmm. like I've tried Do you know Bad Frankie's in, uh, in Fitzroy? Yeah. I do, yeah. So... Seb, who owns it, he occasionally got some really weird and wonderful stuff in. This would have been five years ago at this point in time. And I yeah. remember trying some really, really old stuff. And he, he gave me something and said, this is one of the oldest. I think it was Carayo. Um, and it was pretty wow. bloody awful, to be honest. Um, yeah, it probably was. But, <laughs> but still, a moment in history. <laughs> yeah, a yeah, little point in history. But... For anyone who's watching, um, if you do get the chance to go to Australia anytime uh, after this is over, definitely go and see Jane and Mark at Overeem and Salford Distillery, but also pop to Fitzroy and go to Bad Frankie's because that's yeah. a bloody fantastic bar. Yeah, completely uh, agree. Oh, yeah. My next question is, who yeah. has more distilleries, Ireland or Tasmania? Ooh. I'd say Tasmania now. Yeah, Tasmania has more distilleries. Tasmania has about yeah. 31 at the latest count. Ireland has around 2022. 20, now, I know I'm going to get comments about that telling me I've missed someone. I did this count five days ago. No doubt six more have opened in both places. 
Oh, Jane has frozen up once again. These periods are getting shorter and shorter between each one. Maybe she got another phone call. Anyway, uh, but Dave, if you're still listening, it is really interesting to hear that Did one Jane is on the label. Oh, there we are. I had you the whole time. I don't know what's happening. It's all good. Yep. Uh, the final question, yes. and you definitely know this one. In what year was an Australian whiskey awarded world's best single malt? 2014. 2014. A year I'll never forget. Because all but, the distilleries uh, in Tasmania started getting inquiries. It was, it was, it was really awesome. You know, everyone... Um, Everyone rode the success, I think, because it really it it helped put Tassie on the map. It was some very good news. Oh yeah. Do you know a really funny thing? What's that? I had a bottle of that whiskey. You've got the actual whiskey? No, no, no. I had a bottle of the whiskey. Oh, you did. It's it's well and truly finished. <laughs> I I think I, I I believe I bought it. It was either just before or just after the award. And I was working at a liquor store on the Mornings Peninsula at this time. And we had a bottle and I picked it up for myself because it was only, I think it was about 200 Australian or something. Yeah. Next to nothing right. at the time. Yeah. And I washed it off with a couple of mates. <laughs> and then. I think most people did. <laughs> well, I read, I read a newspaper article a year later. And it was about how two guys had put together 10 grand to buy a bottle of that whiskey. And all I could think was short on rent this month. They could have used that money. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it was it was a whiskey I'll never forget. It was an absolute yeah. fantastic whiskey. That's excellent. Yeah. Have you had much Sullivan's Cove since? I have had some. Funnily enough, I actually found a bottle a Sullivan's Cove um, American oak, old, old, old bottle. I think it was from about eight years ago. I found one in the Netherlands for uh, ah. 45 euro. Um, right. And the guy said, yeah, the guy said he was selling it at that price because he couldn't sell it and he'd had it for years and he just wanted to get rid of it. And I bought ah. the bottle because well, I, I bought the bottle and I polished it off within a week. Um, well, as I am wont to do. Hey, yeah. yeah. That's just that's just reminded me of a really funny story, actually. Um, when I first started selling over him in 2012, uh, the first year that I was selling, or the first couple of months in that year, I was selling all first releases because we, we sort of, um, we auctioned off the first bottle of each cask and then, um, and it was fairly new to, to the Tassie um, punters, I guess. So we didn't mm. sell out of all the first releases of those casks. So when I was out just doing normal sales to bottle shop and that, that's what people were buying. They were buying first releases with certificates of authenticity. Anyway, I, I sold a lot of bottles to a um, to a, a bottle shop right up in the mines in WA, um, and he was excellent. He loved the whiskey, and he and he bought about twelve or fourteen bottles. Anyway, there wasn't really a market for that particular whiskey at the time. It was quite expensive, and I think that maybe the miners were getting the um, the cheaper stuff because mm. it was a year or so later that I got a phone call from from them, and they said, Jane, you sold me this all this whiskey ages ago, and they said it's got dust on it, and um, we just don't, we can't sell it and um, we want you to do to, to let us know if you can do anything about it. And I said, oh, gosh, that was ages ago. What, What is it? I said, can you go and have a look at the product for me? And I said, was it port or sherry cask? And oh, they said, I don't know, it's port and sherry and it's when you open it up, it's got all these certificates in each one. <laughs> and I had to laugh and I, I was very honest to them. I said, I said, you've got about 14 first release overeams up there. And they said, "Well, we we don't want them. We can't sell them." And they said, "Could you buy? Could you buy them back off us?" And I said, um, "I said, oh." And they said, "We'll have to charge you. Um, we'll have to charge you what you what you charged us for it." Um, and I said, "Absolutely, yep." No, I said, "I'll buy them." So I ended up buying them all back, and they sent them back down. So now I'm really happy because I've got a 
a decent collection of Overeem first releases. Jesus. Oh, my God. That's fantastic. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. It was good. It was a lucky find. No, uh, incredible. I've, I'd never been... I don't think I've ever been la that lucky to get a first release and not a collection of first releases. Um, but that's that's part of the thrill of going into small liquor stores is you look at something and you think, that 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 doesn't exist anymore. What's that doing here? I love that. It certainly shouldn't be the price for that. <laughs> it no. is good. Oh. <laughs> anyway, um, sorry. We're done with the questions, we're done with the quiz questions, and now we've got anagrams. I've got five Australian whiskey distillery anagrams here for you. All right. Let's scoot into it. Sorry. <laughs> First I'm one is the most Australian term I could think of. Mark, Raw I need to... darts. Okay, hang on a minute. I'm going to call, the... I'm going to phone a friend. Yeah, oh, yeah, you can bring Mark in if you want, yeah. Yep, Mark, you're in. Okay, so what what what's this all about? So this is simply an anagram. So you know anagrams, the oh, got in here. The letters of here make an Australian distillery or whiskey brand. Oh, Starwood. Starwood, yep. Starwood, yep. Starwood. <laughs> and that was the only non-Tasmanian whiskey. So the others okay. are really close to how... home. All right. I'll see how quick I can get the others. All right. So anagram number two. <laughs> so dwarf. That looks funny, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I should be able to get this, shouldn't I? You should. You really should. Sawford. That looks so weird. <laughs> Sawford. <laughs> because it's you've split it in two, it's totally mind boggling. Oh, it doesn't work. Look, I mean you've you've got that quicker than most people when I, I always do so, you know, their own distillery or brand. You got that quicker than most people. Um, I was or something out of it, but it just wasn't happening. <laughs> well, that's the thing. When you when you said earlier that Sawford Distillery is now no more, all I think was, oh, crap, that's my, I can't make an anagram out of Overeem. It doesn't make anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Anagram number three. Senate Sheet. Sheen Estate. Oh, bloody hell, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, you got that one quickly. That's yeah, Sheen that Estate. Made, that made more sense to me than the Sawford, would you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Here's, here's one for you. Anagram number four is... Oggle verb. Oh, um, oh, that's really weird. Mm. Um, oh, shivers, you got me on it. Oh, hang on, I think, um. I can give you a clue if you want. Okay, give me a clue. Think sheep shit at Christmas. Oh, um, oh, Belgrove. <laughs> yes. Belgrove, yeah. Belgrove. Straight away when you said sheep, I thought of um, heart's horn, and then I was like, that's definitely not heart's horn. For those who are watching who are confused, by the way, Peter Bignall of Belgrove has released a whiskey with the malt dried over sheep dung for Christmas. Because what else would you want for Christmas? Yeah. 
I think if you gave me the clues for each one, it's it's a lot easier. I know a lot about the distilleries, um, but I'm maybe not so good at anagrams. I mean, thing is, I could I could give you a clue for all. I couldn't have given you a, a clue for Sheen Estate. I'm not up to date on my Sheen Estate knowledge. Think this one. If you can't get this, I believe I have a a good clue for you. But okay, yep. Your final anagram is lad nerds. Okay. Um, lad nerds, hey. Lad nerds. Um, right. Okay, I need a clue. Okay, now I believe they they moved in 2013, 2014, they moved their distillery. They moved okay. to a different location. Oh, um mm. Another clue. Do you know anything more about the distillery? Uh, yeah, they uh, they do a lot of single cask bottlings online, typically along the lines of Pinot Noir casks, uh, very small Pinot Noir casks. Um, you wouldn't say they're a blue distillery. I still haven't got it. Um, oh, uh, no. Everyone I go to go for, it's not got, not matching up. Uh, a Tassie distillery, you still on Tassie? Yep, yep. This is Tasmanian. Um, oh. Oh, no. Little, little square bottles, little very square bottles. If I have this wrong, I'm going to be really well, pissed at myself. Well, I know who does square bottles, so... Um, Hobart does little square ones, sort of. Um, Think more central. Oh. Yeah, they're not coastal, these guys. Um, nah, I'm out. Oh, uh, let me. No, tell me the first letter. This. What does it start with? First. And then I'll know. It starts with R. Oh. Um. Hey, they're I don't quite, know. They're quite next to Peter. They're quite they're quite close to, to Bell Grove. Um Well Nant used to be up there. Um Not Nant. Not Nant. No. We don't talk it's about Nant. It's definitely not Nant. Um, and then it was not an old Kempton were up there. Um, yeah, no, no luck on this one. Redlands. Oh, Redlands, which was old Kempton. That's ridiculous. I can't believe I you, didn't know that. And you know Anna, what? You, you... <laughs> That's crazy. That I could never get Redlands out of that. Isn't that crazy? How the mind works. Um, and now, yes, I'm going to have to look Redlands up the Now, old Kempton, and we've yeah. actually got we've actually got Robbie Gilligan working at White Label, and Robbie would be very disappointed with me if I didn't see Redlands out of that. If you want, but I, I didn't actually know that they did a lot of Pinot Noir casks, so that was news to me. I mean, I'm definitely going to have to look that up because I I see, I'm certain it's Redlands. It could be bloody Sheen Estate. And no, it is, no, I'm you're so probably busy. right. No, you're probably right. I think your knowledge is pretty good. You're on the ball. Uh, I wouldn't say that at all. But um, <laughs> I do think I'm correct when I say you are. you have definitely done better, I think, I think the only people who have done better than you at the quiz and the anagrams, Boutique Dave for one, oh, and then maybe, Boutique. yeah, maybe Billy Abbott from the Whiskey Exchange. But I think you're in the top three. I've not done a leaderboard. I really should. 
but I think you're definitely in the top three, if not vying for first place. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> anyway, that about wraps us up. Before we finish, is there anything that you would like to add? Um, no, look, I'm just so excited. I'm, I'm on a bit of a, a high at the moment because, um, yeah, we've had a, a busy couple of months just getting ready for this Overeem takeover. And, um, yeah, I should have probably mentioned to you earlier that this was what was happening today. I, I don't know if I mentioned to, that to you or not, but anyway, it's nice to, um, to announce the news, but we're not really announcing the news to the public properly today because we've just got to get, um, some things in place. Our website's not ready to go. Mm. I know you wanted to, um, to mention some sales and, um, yeah, look, I'd love to to drive you to get some sales for us, but um, our website will be ready, I think, next week. But absolutely, if anyone, um, even international, wants to order some Overeem whiskey, um, they can absolutely do it through me. Um, and it's probably best they just email me. Um, and, yeah, they can email me at janeovereem at gmail.com just until we get all our, our new web addresses and everything up and running in the next couple of days. But if anyone wants um, us to post a bottle over there, we can absolutely arrange that. Fantastic. There you go, guys. Email Jane at jameovereem at gmail.com, which is fantastic. And uh, no, thank you for – you didn't mention the news, but thank you for bringing it on. Um, Relocated in 2016. Oh, that's interesting. Dave put up a comment about uh, about Old Kempton, and uh, yes. he's he's going through his malt whiskey yearbooks to find out everything he can. <laughs> well, Dave, yeah. I want to hear from you too. There you go, Dave. You got to email Jane. But we are so happy that one, what you've done through your career and soul food and two that you've got over in back is fantastic news i am really excited i'm sure everyone is excited and i'm sure that you know uh will uh, once that website goes live i will uh try and post some stuff and you know point some uk business in your direction because we got to get your whiskey over here because it's bloody fantastic and we, i really want to see people drinking it yeah uh, thank you we'll make it happen absolutely all right well that that wraps us up for the night. I know you've got uh, you've got stuff to do, and I've got a full day ahead of me. But <laughs> Jane, it was so fantastic to have you on. You had great answers. You did bloody fantastic with the trivia, and we wish you all the best. So thank you. Thanks so much. Um, you're lucky to have a dram at the beginning of the morning, but I'm gonna enjoy the rest of the night celebrating the Overeem takeover. So thanks for having us. No worries. Cheers to you and cheers to everyone watching. Thanks. See ya. <laughs> See ya.